photographing the material like form. To better understand photography, I often find myself contemplating the reasons why people take pictures. Many times I've been out strolling around, watching photographs of friends, family, or landscapes be taken, and wonder what it is that drives people to click the shutter. I figure it is the idea of capturing the moment and preserving the emotional state generated from the atmosphere or individuals involved that inspires most pictures to be taken. In my early American history class, I learned of how the Native Americans would refuse to have their pictures taken in fear that their souls would be captured and prevented from passing on into the next realm upon death. If this were truly the case behind photography today, I could easily see why people would want to take pictures for we have an intense fear of letting go of the material world. Unfortunately, this goal of capturing the moment is seldom achieved, and those once cherished memories become shadows of disappointment after our prints come back to us. Here, I don't wish to dis or downplay the aim of everyday photography or discourage anyone from taking photojournalistic pictures by any means. Nonetheless, I would have to conclude that photography can create desperate illusions of grasping reality if not viewed within the right state of mind. Kandinsky, in his book Concerning the Spiritual in Art, highlighted this very issue when discussing the ideas of abstract painting in relation to color and form. He said, There exists no purely material form. A material object cannot be absolutely reproduced the impossibility, and in art, the uselessness of attempting to copy an object exactly, the desire to give an object full expression, are the impulses which drive the artist away from the literal coloring to purely artistic aims. Keeping this in mind, I would have to say the reason for most of our touristy pictures and why they're underdeveloped in relation to the expectations that supersede them is that we can never photograph exactly what we have experienced firsthand. There's always some element missing from the picture that we are not able to capture, whether it's the greater picture that goes beyond the parameters of the camera lens, or the void of the other senses, like sound, smell, taste, and touch. Due to this inadequacy, the goal of abstract photography emerges with its ability to capture all the senses by incorporating ideas rather than events locked in time. Now photographing the spiritual, or color. In my photographs I have erased all the visually associated concepts of scale and time, which in turn allows color to surpass the role of form. The filter I use also makes it difficult to determine any boundaries between the color schemes. This gives a free form nature to the composition and allows the soul to stir within the viewer. This identification process is one of the key objectives to this color theory. Once the inner self becomes awakened in the observer, the thirst for spiritual communion with God will follow. The relationship between form and color is similar to our spirit and how we are confined within our bodies under the parameters of time. Color is to the soul as form is to the body. You cannot find color without form, and a body cannot live and breathe in this world void of its spirit. Without the limitations of a visual time restriction, this process opens a new corridor for the soul to travel into the realm of the infinite abstract. Here, it can experience a glimpse of eternity while still staying within the boundaries of form by the definition of photography which is undoubtedly subjected to time. Pillar number three, the language of color. It goes without saying that color is a very influential property that governs many aspects of our lives. Studies show how it affects our moods, the decisions, and the choices we make, and the way we relate to others. Color is a communicator. It is unique in a descriptive mode of expression that is able to convey ideas and concepts far beyond the verbal parameters of the tongue. Color is intimate and personal, as well as it is universal in how we react towards it. 
if we as humans were to be broken down between body and spirit, I would say that the tongue speaks for the body and form as much as color can interpret for the soul and the abstract. The Laws and Linguistics of Color If I were to say the word red in front of a room of a hundred people, I would be left with nothing but a hundred different shades of opinion. That is because the verbal side of color is interpretive. Under this reasoning, we see how our cultures and environment can both play a big role on how we communicate with color on an international scale of social linguistics. However, in order to study the characteristics of color in its pure state, all form of prejudice and outside influence must be eliminated. Due to the fact that color pre-existed both culture and language, we can rid ourselves of their impact to help refine our understanding of it. In doing this, we see how color reacts in a seemingly prescribed manner unto itself. This is what I would like to call the laws and linguistics of color. Words are clearly identified as having distinct inflected forms. For starters, the word circle is a structure both concrete in definition and universally agreed upon across all cultures. Within the laws and linguistics of color, color is the phonetic equivalent of a prefix or suffix that either gives, takes away, or enhances the particular quality of any certain form. Take, for example, the motion of a pure yellow circle and how it uplifts, expands, and radiates warmth from the parameters of its form. See figure B. It speaks of an energy source with positive affirmation. With the solid blue circle in figure C, we receive a cool feeling that sinks with the image as it contracts from its form, resonating a darker tone. With figure D and E, we see a combination of the laws and linguistics of color working together in a constant push-pull motion. So what is color saying in my photographs? Color is a very active language. It is able to move or speak beyond the surface of things, all the while appearing to be at the state of rest. Similar to the qualities of God, it is a constant set out of time, as well as it is interactive to those existing around it. What I fear is that we as a people have gotten to the point where we no longer care for the yearnings of the soul. Either it has ceased to clearly utter its desires to us, or we have forced it into becoming a dead language by suppressing it with our daily livings. As a result, our eyes have become duller and now cloud the windows to our soul by the frivolous blabbering of the tongue. We as a people desire to have names. Everything we encounter must have a name and be classified accordingly to concrete principles. We have simultaneously evolved and yet devolved to the point that without knowing what something is, we feel lost, confused, and unable to experience it in full. It is within this state that our visual comprehension has become more reliant upon the processing of substantial data over processing abstract ideas, because visual recognition itself requires no act of faith from within the viewer. Because I'm dealing with photography, it is the general nature of every viewer to first question what the image actually is, so they can easily process the art, categorize it according to their past definitions and understandings, and move on to the next piece without even experiencing anything new. The goal of my photographs is to reopen the lines of communication between the viewer's soul and God. Once the viewer gets past the question of what the image actually is and begins to focus more on why the feeling inside of him or her actually exists, the pathway leading towards understanding begins to unfold. Here, if one truly seeks, full of heart, enlightenment will surely follow. In conclusion, well, um, there is no conclusion to this. Thank you.